Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we are going to have a look back at the 10 games that got the best scores on the channel for last month, the month of course of February. In total we reviewed 13 games on the channel last month, so 3 games obviously haven't made the list. Those 3 games were Fallen Legion Revenants, Taxi Chaos and Skyforge. Links to those 3 reviews as well as the 10 reviews listed in this video will all be in that top pinned comment if you want to have a closer look at any of these games. We'll start with a game that got the 10th best score and of course work our way up. And with all that said then, what were the best scoring games of the month? Well, let's find out. Coming in in 10th place then was our most recent review funnily enough and that was Hellpoint. This is a third person action adventure game with a sci-fi horror setting and would definitely fall under the category of a Souls-like. You will be challenging enemies with weak and heavy attacks, finding new weapons and armour and upgrading your character's skill as you go. Mark reviewed this one for us and put it quite nicely when he said that whilst it doesn't do anything particularly new or original with the genre, it also doesn't do anything particularly wrong. Really the game's biggest problem is its performance. On entering any new main level, you'll notice the frame rate drop quite significantly. Mark also reported that in handheld mode this is even worse. Hopefully they'll bring out a patch to fix this. It's also quite expensive for what it is and its age unless you are a hardcore fan of the genre. All in all though, one that we enjoyed and it got a switch up score of 74%. In ninth place for the month then was a game called Haven. This sees you playing as two lovers, you and Kay, who after fleeing their homeland crash on an uninhabited planet called Source. There is a heavy emphasis on narrative and the relationship built between these two characters and this is done very well owing largely to the great script and the excellent voice acting. The game also includes some turn based combat and whilst it does get a bit more intricate later on into the game, it also feels quite rinse and repeat for most of the time. Again, another game where the main concern relates to performance. The frame rate is quite inconsistent, running at 60 in the hub areas, but fluctuating quite wildly at times elsewhere, plus it seemed quite prone to crashing when you loaded the game back up. A nice mix of storytelling and some action sections nonetheless, and it got a switch up score of 78%. In 8th place for the month we had Persona 5 Strikers. This game of course is set in a Persona world but with gameplay more akin to the Dynasty Warriors games. It contains a mix of visual storytelling, investigation and combat with some of these areas faring better than the others. For example the investigation sections which consist of you running around talking to enough people to fill your investigation bar don't necessarily hold up quite so well to the action sequences in the jails that follows after them. Whilst the game certainly looks striking, no pun intended, there were some visual quirks that did let the game down a tad, things like noticeable popping and some less than flattering textures. Overall though it has a great cast, interesting storytelling and very enjoyable action sequences and it got a switch up score of 79%. In 7th place for the month we had Curse of the Dead Gods. This is a top down action roguelite which sees you needing to make your way through a number of temples taking out a host of enemies as you go. If you die of course you go back to the beginning, typical roguelites fare in that respect. This one does bring a few new ideas to the table though. The first one is that you have to stay in the light otherwise the extent of any damage you take will be increased. Your character has a torch and you'll be needing to light fires as you fight to try and keep that damage down. It also has a curse system brought about by corruption. These are both a blessing and, well, a curse because you can embrace them and they'll grant you some perks, but for every positive they give you, they'll be sure to take something from you, be it monetary or health-wise. It has that addictive gameplay loop and looks and sounds great, but it can be very frustrating as you'd probably expect, and on balance it got a switch-up score of 81%. In at number 6 then, we had Little Nightmares 2. 
This followed its predecessor in coming to the Switch and is a very atmospheric puzzle platformer that also has some stealth and action sections thrown into boot. You play as a young boy called Mono who is trapped in a bizarre world where a transmission from a local tower seems to have affected the adults around you. This leads to you making your way across a variety of environments, partaking in some slight puzzle solving, a host of platforming and some stealth sections where you need to avoid enemies. The game looks wonderful, with a terrifyingly macabre environment having been built, and the highlights for me were definitely those adult character models who are just so bizarre and creepy, although playing these sections can become quite frustrating as you will die often. The major downside though is definitely the controls. They are just a little awkward, which when you consider that you will be trying to take on some precise platforming and running at speed to try and avoid some quite dangerous creatures, they do feel like they hinder more than they help a lot of the time. It's worth playing for the atmosphere alone and I've seen the physical copy already starting to creep down in price and it got a switch up score of 81%. At fifth place was Ghost and Goblins Resurrection. This is a remake of the classic arcade game that came out in 1985 and is an action platformer come run and gun where you need to make your way to the end of levels, taking on a host of enemies, so many enemies, shooting them as you go and then defeating a boss to move on to the next stage. This fleshes out the original by extending the length of the levels, adding in a new magic system and also allowing you to play with a second player in local co-op. It's still as brutally difficult as ever, you really will need to be up for a challenge if you take this one on. But along with the sheer frustration you will feel at times, and I haven't sworn at a game as much as I did this one in years, especially that dragon boss at the end of level 2, but it does bring a sense of satisfaction when you do finally beat a level. The art style, they go for a hand drawn style this time, and in the comment section of my review, it was quite polarised as to whether people liked it or not. I think you really do need to see it in the flesh to truly appreciate it. The backgrounds in particular, they look like matte paintings, they really are quite lovely. What let it down though for me, again, is the controls. They just don't quite feel as fluid as the original. Arthur seems to move much slower than he did, and it just doesn't quite flow as well. You do get used to it though, don't get me wrong, and it's still a very good game if you're up for that challenge, and it got a switch up score of 81%. In fourth place was the first review of February, this was Turrican Flashback. This bundles together four classic games from the Turrican series. You have the first Turrican game, the Amiga version. You have Turrican 2, also from the Amiga. You have Mega Turrican from the Mega Drive and Super Turrican from the Super Nintendo. Now the Turrican games are run and gunners, but they have much more of an emphasis on exploration than other games in the genre usually afford you. It's not just a sense of left to right, there is a huge amount of verticality to each level too, and there are a number of power-ups and secrets to find to try and make each level slightly easier, because they are all very tough games. Mega Turrican is the exception to the rule in that respect, not in terms of the difficulty, but in terms of it being more linear than the other games, and the games included do offer a nice mix when compared to each other. As a collection it is slightly lacklustre, I mean you can save and rewind and things like that which is great, but there's nothing like concept art, things like that that I really look for in a collection of classic games, but that's not to take away from the fantastic action, and the gameplay holds up tremendously well to this day, plus of course you have the legendary music of Chris Holzbeck which earned audio a rare 20 out of 20 in the review. It's great to have these games on a collection, especially those Amiga versions. It's a shame the C64 version of the first Turrican's not on there, but you can't have everything. And the game got a switch up score of 82%. Into the top three for the month now, and in third place was a game called Blue Fire. Now this was a game that many people were looking forward to. I saw many comments that were referring to it as 3D Hollow Knight, and it's certainly a 3D Metroidvania, but it also has a lot in common with the 3D Zelda games in some respects too. A big part of it as well though is the platforming, and thankfully with these in mind, the controls of the game are very tight. You'll be taking on a number of enemies, including bosses, and earning new abilities that allow you to go back and open up previous areas. The world is fun to explore and it gets its balance of platforming, combat and exploration right and it offers good value for money. 
In terms of a few negatives, there are some stutters in the game and it does really feel like it needs a map, bearing in mind it is essentially a metroidvania, but on the whole, very enjoyable and got a switch up score of 84%. In second place for the month we had Rogue Heroes Ruins of Tassos. This is a roguelite but it also includes some elements of town building. You try to make your way through dungeons, attempting to defeat one of four titans and therefore move on further into the game and take on the next one. Defeating one of the titans earns you a permanent weapon and you can then use this to explore more of the world. Whilst in the dungeons though you are collecting gems and if you do die you can take those back to your town and use them to not only build up the town itself or furniture for your house but you can also use them in skill trees to make yourself stronger and then of course attempt the run again. It really does nail the roguelite's element, never making it feel like it's all for nothing and for this reason is a great deal of fun. It took about 15 hours to finish the story segment but of course you can continue to build up your town and for £16 this is very good value. On the negative front it does feel a bit unbalanced at first with the first dungeon being very hard and then because of the constant deaths and upgrading you'll most likely find the second one very easy but after that it does seem to balance itself out and it is a game that we very much enjoyed, it got a switch up score of 85%. And the first placed game for the month of February 2021 was Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. This is of course a port of a Wii U game that came out in 2013 and as the title would imply is a 3D Mario game but the structure of the levels bizarrely does lend itself nicely to a 2D Mario game. The levels are linear in that respect and the introduction of the cat suit power up does lend itself nicely to some verticality within the levels. You can play the game with up to four players and of course it introduces the new Bowser's Fury segment which unlike the base game is more of a 3D collectathon. It's a nice mix of the two different platforming genres. The game is just as much fun as it was when it released back on the Wii U and of course is now open to a much wider audience owing to the success of the Switch compared to its predecessor. On the more negative side, the online component that was added for this new version doesn't seem to hold up very well. There's a lot of lag and hopefully Nintendo can fix this, especially when you consider you have to pay for online on Nintendo consoles these days. But all in all, still a fantastic game, the top game of the month, and it got a switch up score of 90%. So there you have it, there are the 10 best scored games on Switch Up for the month of February. As I said, we did review 13 games in total. I will put the link to all 13 games in the top in comment if you are interested in any of them and want some more information. I'll also stick in the last two episodes of this particular series, January's and December 2020. Just in case you are new to the channel, perhaps this is your first video of ours and want some easy access to some more of our reviews. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course and until next time, happy gaming.